Welcome to this uh, video tutorial. Today we'll talk about uh, one of the models you have to explain to your patient, which is the etiological model of the Barlow model. This is the third model that you are advised to uh, teach to your patient. This third model is usually teach during the second session, uh, because psychoeducation is divided between two sessions, the first session with the two first model and the second session with the third and the fourth. This is the third one, the etiological model of Barlow. Uh, this, this model is centered on the, on the causes uh, of, um, of phobia and obsessive compulsive disorder and anxiety disorder. So it's, it's about the causes. Why does your patient have phobia have obsessive compulsive disorder, have ag agoraphobia, etc. This will answer their question because often they, they want to know why, why they, they have anxi an anxiety disorder. So first of all, you have to explain to them, you can show, what I usually do is I wrote on a, on a huge board the, the model, the schematics of a model, so they can see with their own eyes at the same time well, I'm explaining to them the model. So I advise you to use a board uh, with a pen when you have drawn just once, well, that's enough, just once, the complete model to show them on a screen and explaining to them with a laser, pointing with a laser. Anyway, so what about the causes? So when you look at the model, you see that the, there is a possible biological vulnerability. The biological vulnerability means that there could be um, genetic predisposition, so genetic predisposition uh, to, uh, to anxiety, which means that they, if their parents are anxious, they could, uh, in fact, uh, their children could have the same kind of sensitivity, uh, susceptibility or predisposition regarding uh, anxiety. It means that they, it is their legacy. They can inherit from this uh, predisposition. The question is, um, the idea is, if, you're, if you'd say this, this way to your patient, they would think, oh yeah, but so my parents are very bad and their genes are horrible. Why do they give me as this as a legacy? You have to explain to your patient that yes, it's certainly from the parents, from the DNA, they have inherited uh, this uh, predisposition. Um, but this could have some uh, advantages, because if they are more sensitive to the, uh, to the environment, if they are more sensitive to others, so you can ask the question to your patient, always an exchange is, if you are more sensitive to others and more sensitive to the environment, how it is useful in, in your life? And uh, so they say, yes, so maybe, uh, maybe in the human relationship, and yes, because this is very useful. This sensitivity uh, is useful for dealing with others, so for, uh, or treating others, so it's useful for people working with, uh, with others, with medicine or psychology, etc. And the fact that they are more sensitive to the environment is also useful uh, regarding artistic activities or art artistic profession. So this is the bright side. And there is a dark side. The dark side is they are more susceptible uh, to develop uh, anxiety, an anxiety disorder. So you can ask your patient, always ask, uh, is uh, in this, so, so here, uh, is there anyone who have one or two parents uh, who uh, is or are anxious and often someone have at least one or two parents with this. So you explain to this what I've just uh, told you. Now, what about the, the causes? You can see on the model that there is four different types of cause of explanation. The first one is direct trauma. It means that your patient at a precise moment of his life, of her life, have been traumatized by a car accident, uh, by a wreckage uh, in a plane, uh, by um, 
by um, a lift which suddenly, suddenly stop uh, in a building. So by a lift which can be out of order uh, and all this, this precise situation can cause a panic attack and can cause a trauma. First explanation. Second explanation is a vicarious experience. Vicarious experience means that your patient didn't uh, have not been a victim of an event, of, a, or of an ordeal, but he, have, he was the witness of such a situation. He was witnessing someone who had a panic attack. He was witnessing someone injured. He was wi witnessing someone who is um, trapped inside a car. Um, and he was uh, shocked by witnessing all this. Um, and then he remembered it. So it's also at a precise moment when he was a witness of a traumatic event. So this is vicarious experience. Direct trauma or direct experience. Vicarious experience or vicarious trauma. And now the third one, which is stress. Stress is completely different. It's not a precise event at a precise moment. It's more spread uh, over days, weeks or months and is often um, related to uh, um, awful situation, difficult situation, uh, such as a divorce, such as, uh, um, um, such as a disease, um, such as issue with work, um, such as issue in the, in the issues in the couple, etc. So this puts stress, but over a long period of time, not at a precise moment. And then the last one is uh, false informations or fake informations. This is when your patient, when he was a child or when he was a teenager, uh, he was dealing with his parents, with his anxious parents, who often said overprotective sentences. For example, do not swim too far or you will drown, that's sure. And uh, go, go, go back home early tonight because if you stay longer, it, it's sure you will be raped, um, and don't go too far away in the forest, or you will, you will, you will get lost. You see, this sentence make the uh, child thinking that the environment is pretty hostile, and it could create in some children um, an anxiety disorder. So once you have explained the four causes, then you turn to your patient and you ask them, or where's the exchange? Huh? You ask the dialogue. You ask them, okay. I've explained to you the four causes. Now, let's see. What about you? Where, in which, which of the causes, which of the causes sound familiar to you, sound familiar to your personal experience? So some say, yes, it was my parents, and they always say I have to be careful of everything. Or oh, yes, me, uh, I got a car accident. Or oh, yes, I was in, me, I was involved in an earthquake, and I was uh, trapped inside a building. Uh, yes, etc. This really helped them to understand, in fact, more precisely uh, the causes of an uh, anxiety disorder and it helped them to understand and then it's better for them to deal with, uh, it will help them dealing with anxiety. Anyway, all these causes will lead to a, a false alarm or a true alarm and with time this alarm, this state of alarm, this set of alert will be uh, learned by the patient who will remember when he was trapped in a lift, when he was trapped in a plane, in a subway, uh, um, or in a car, or in a traffic jam, etc. He will remember it, remember what he had felt, remember this alarm, which will become a, a learned alarm, and it will uh, evolve into um, anxious apprehension, which means that the patient will start to anticipate what will happen and when he will, when he will, um, he will anticipate catastrophic events, and then he will start becoming anxious, and this is how it will evolve. It will evolve in uh, an anxiety disorder, phobia, or obsessive compulsive disorder, or, uh, or generalized disorder. Well, that's it for this model. It was the third one. I will see you for the fourth one, which is the cognitive model. In the meantime, take care.